Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be using the log rule for integration. We're going to continue our work in finding antiderivatives. We're going to move away um, from using the reverse power rule uh, and just simple trig derivatives, antiderivatives. We're going to move away from what we've been doing and look at a new rule so that when we are faced with integrands and we look at them, we go, hey, i got to find that antiderivative and the reverse power rule doesn't work, what else might be an option for me? So in this video, we're going to be using the log rule for integration. So having said that, I, I think it might be wise for us to just revisit differentiating log functions. So I'm going to do one quick example okay, of reminding us about the log rule for differentiation. Uh, and if you need further examples of differentiating log functions, uh, you might want to look in Sophia video F. I think we did several examples there of finding derivatives of log functions. Okay, but for right now, we're just going to look at one. All right, so let's find the derivative of this function. Okay, well, we know it's a log function. We know it's a composite function. Okay, we know the inside function right here is this quadratic. Okay, and we can let u represent that complicated inside function. All right, to find the derivative of log function, okay, we created a fraction. We actually built a fraction for our answer, our derivative answer, by putting 1 over u and then multiplying by the derivative of u. So our derivative of a log function is 1 over u times u prime. So all I'm going to do is put 1 over x squared plus 6x and I'm going to multiply by the derivative of x squared plus 6x, which I know it's 2x plus 6, but if you're interested in showing your work the whole way, okay, this is the work that supports what you're doing. So 1 over u times u prime. So to finish this, I'm going to go ahead and build my fraction here. This derivative belongs on top of the numerator. And unless I have a common factor, I'm finished. If I have a common factor, then I can cancel it. That would require my factoring both the numerator and denominator. I can see in the numerator I can pull out a 2, and I'm left with x plus 3. In the denominator, if I pulled out an x, I would be left with x times x plus 6. Nothing's going to cancel, so this is actually my derivative. So with the log function, again, it's 1 over u times u prime. Real quick review. If you want to look at further examples, like I said, just go to Sophia video F, and there you can find several examples um, that revisit finding derivatives of log functions. All right, but for us, our objective in this video, like I said, was not to differentiate, but to integrate. I'm going to give you two formulas. One involves just the basic parent function, and the other one is the one that we're mostly going to use um, it, it's required when we have composite functions, and, and that's typically what we're going to be asked to work with is composite functions. All right, so two rules, log rules for integration. All right, let's integrate the parent function 1 over x, the reciprocal function. So again, this is the derivative. What do we differentiate to get 1 over x? You might remember it's just natural log of x. And then we're going to have plus c. This is our general solution. If I, I knew an ordered pair, a point on natural log that belonged to the natural log, then I can insert x and y and find c. But right now we're just going to bring in the constant of integration. One quick adjustment though. When you integrate and not differentiate, when you go backwards to find an antiderivative, Okay, you have to bring in the absolute value. Um, more about this later, it would take a little more time than a video allows, so just know that at this point, when you integrate a reciprocal function, it does go back to the natural log of the absolute value of x. Okay, before I give you guys the other rule that we're going to actually be using mostly, I want to just look at, if you would, real quick, I just want to look at 1 over x dx in a little more detail. So don't write this, just kind of watch, observe. Uh, you guys know you can rewrite this as x to the negative 1 dx. If you brought x out of the denominator, it would look like x to the negative 1. 
let's say you forgot that you you uh, had to integrate this back to natural log of x and you just thought well you know what this is a, a power function because it, it looks like one it has a base of x with a numeric exponent if you try to use the power rule on this think it think about what's going to happen okay if i'm going to do the reverse power rule that would have us increase the exponent by one add one and get to zero and divide by zero well that's not going to happen we can't divide by zero so this is actually the only power function, this is the only kind of power function here when the exponent is negative one, negative one, where we can't use the reverse power rule. So if I can't use the reverse power rule, okay, then what is that antiderivative? And like I said, we've seen this before, the antiderivative is natural log of absolute value of x. So just kind of keep this in mind right here that you want to be on guard for that negative one. I can have x to the negative two dx and use the reverse power rule because it doesn't require that I divide by zero. I can have the integral of x to the negative one half. I can integrate that using the reverse power rule because when I increase the exponent by one, I'm not dividing by zero. So again, the only time you want to be on guard and know that you can't use the reverse power rule is when your exponent is negative one. Any other number is going to work um, with the reverse power rule. All right, let's jump back into our problem here. Okay, and let's look at the other integration rule that we're mostly going to be using in this video. Okay. What happens when we have a composite function <laughs> uh, and we have 1 over u du? Okay, so in my letter of choice here is just u. u is going to represent an inside function. Oh my goodness, that, that is a u. Well, if we can take an integral and set it up using u substitution so that it looks like this, okay, then we can integrate that back to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. I think it's just going to take some examples for you to kind of get used to what's going on here. So let's just look at some quick examples. Okay, I need to find the antiderivative of 2 over x. Okay, if you wanted to, you could bring up x out of the denominator, and it would be 2x to the negative 1 dx. Okay, right here, we know that has to go back to a natural log function. Okay, how do you handle 2? Well, 2 is just a constant multiplier. You could bring out 2 of the integral, and you're just left with 2 times integral x to the negative 1 dx which is actually okay, what this situation is here. So it's going to be 2 times the natural log absolute value of x plus c. Okay, at this point, um, this is correct, but I also want to make sure that you, you, you remember that another way to write this is when we have log functions that there's properties that belong to log functions. So if you wanted to, you could move the 2 and you could put it as an exponent. In which case, if you did move it to the exponent position here, you really wouldn't need absolute value because squaring is going to uh, you know, produce a positive number anyway. So all of these are acceptable answers right here. Which one do you, do you give? Well, you can stop right here if it's not a multiple choice question. You're finished. That's correct. If it's multiple choice and this answer is not there as a selection, then of course you, know, you want to be thinking about your properties and how else that, that problem could look. Uh, this is 4x minus 1, eh, 1 over 4x minus 1 dx. Okay, so I need to find the antiderivative for this function. Well, um, we can't break this apart. I, I can't put 1 over 4x minus 1 over 1. The only time I can break apart a fraction is if I have um, division by a monomial. If I have just one term underneath here, then I could put it under everything that's in the numerator. So it's not an option here to do some algebra and break it apart. Uh, you might want to go ahead and bring up the quantity 4x minus 1 to the negative 1 exponent. And right here, we need to be thinking, you know what, this is the, the log rule. This is not the reverse power rule. So at this point, it is the log rule, so here's where our u substitution is going to kick in for us. All right, it's a composite function. 
the outside function is, if you will, x to the negative 1, and the inside function is linear. So here's where we're going to tap back into our understanding of u substitution. Let's let u be the inside function. So du is 4dx. Okay, notice over here that I need to bring in a 4 and pull out a 1 fourth. Okay, that's going to allow me to go ahead and continue with u substitution. So working down here, I've got the integral 1 fourth. Okay, I'm going to convert over this whole quantity is going to be replaced with u, u to the negative 1, and then all of this will be replaced with du. Okay, as long as we've accounted for everything, we're good to go. Um, now that we're in this form right here, okay, then we know what the antiderivative is. 1 fourth natural log absolute value of u, which is 4x minus 1, ah, plus c. All right, so let's look at an alternate way that we might want to answer the, the question here. Okay, and let's ignore that. <laughs> Again, you can move the 1 fourth as an exponent. So it could be natural log absolute value 4x minus 1 to the 1 fourth power plus c. Uh, that 1 fourth power actually means the fourth root. So if you wanted to rewrite this as the natural log of the fourth root of the absolute value of 4x minus 1, that's acceptable. Again, just stop right here. You're good to go. If it's multiple choice, begin to think of properties and other ways that um, you can express this answer. Okay, let's say we're interested in finding uh, what's the antiderivative for this integrand. What do we differentiate to get uh, this function right here? Again, I can't do any algebra. I can't break it apart. At this point, I think I'm going to get rid of the fraction. So I'm going to bring up x squared plus 1 to the negative 1 power. Begin to think of the natural log rule because of that negative 1. And notice that I just put the x behind the quantity. I'm just getting ready for u substitution, okay? So we know the inside function is going to be x squared plus 1, and that's convenient because that derivative is a linear function, which is precisely what we had in the numerator. So if the derivative of the denominator here gives you something that's in the numerator, you can be, you know, kind of thinking, hey, that, that might be the log rule, and especially if you bring uh, this quantity out of the denominator and have a negative 1 exponent. All right, let's go ahead and do u substitution. Uh, we're good to go here. This is going to be u to the negative 1. I need to account for x dx, but I need to bring in a 2 and pull out a 1 half. Okay, this will become u to the negative 1. All of this is accounted for. It gets replaced with du. Okay, this exactly matches the log rule that I gave you up here previously. So we're ready to integrate it. 1 half natural log absolute value x squared plus 1 plus c. Again, and enough said about how to handle the 1 half. Okay, you might want to attempt this one on your own. Pause the video. Uh, when you finish, come back and see how you did. All right, finding an antiderivative here. Uh, I can't do any algebra. Uh, I'm going to need to bring this quantity out of the denominator. Before I do that, though, I notice that this is a cube, a cube function. Its derivative would be 3x squared plus 1, which is exactly what I have in the numerator. So this is going to be the log rule. So bringing the denominator up, I'm going to put it as the first factor. Okay, 
So if I'm using the log rule, then the inside function is going to be x cubed plus x. The derivative 3x squared plus 1, and then of course the differential here. I don't need to bring any, anything in. This is all going to be replaced with du, so it's a pretty basic integration problem. So I have u to the negative 1, and then all of this becomes du. Antiderivative. Natural log. Absolute value x cubed plus x. plus c. All right, so we're going to look at some different situations in the next video. We're going to continue to use the log rule for integration, but there's still a few more examples that, that are a little bit different that we need to consider.